Hi, I'm Scott, and today I'm going to show you how I made this 3D printed Christmas ornament on Dad It Yourself. So you can see the filament is almost to the feeder head, and that's one piece. And as it goes in there, it's going to go into a pause mode. All right, so my model that I have loaded up is 80 millimeters in diameter, and it takes about seven meters of PLA filament to make. So what I did is I got four green and three red filaments that are a little over a meter long. And what I'm gonna do is feed those into the printer as it prints. Uh, my printer has a great technique, so as it runs out of filament, it'll stop and go into a pause thing, and I can just feed in another piece of filament. And hopefully as this prints, it's going to alternate between the green and the red and kind of provide a nice um, blended uh, pattern and give a nice effect. So let's get that started. So as you can see, the filament is almost into the feeder head, and when it does, it's going to go into a pause mode, and then I'm going to change the color. So let's see if that happens the way I'm planning on it to happen. Okay, well, I had to stop my print. I had a misprint, as you can see. My part of my red lab layer didn't stick, uh, but that's okay because I think the pieces I was putting in here are too long because I'm getting more of a layer cake version as opposed to a, um, oh, it's hard to explain, the modeled effect I was looking for, the streaky. So let me see if I can get this off of here and show you what I'm talking about. See how it's solid green and then red? I wanted to have streaks of red and green interspersed as it went through. So I'm going to slow down the print speed and I have some green loaded already and I'm just going to use shorter pieces of red and green maybe a foot long and see if that makes a difference. So let's get started again. So I stopped my print again because even the length I had which was probably 12 inches long the length of my feed tube um, still gives me a solid color. Um, so I've gone ahead and cut these pieces down, look at that, like into three, four, five inch pieces. And I'm going to try that again and see how that works. Okay, well you can see I was having some other issues here. Um, one, I didn't push the second color in as quickly as I should and it stopped feeding a little bit and that's why I got this issue here. And those pieces still aren't short enough. I don't want this much solid color. I want streaks of each color. So I've gone and cut these things down now. We're talking three inch segments. And let's see if that makes a difference. So I think I got it figured out and it looks like it's working. Uh, definitely short pieces. I'm talking like two or three inches at most. And you're just feeding them in as fast as you can to keep them pushing the next one through. Um, this technique only really needs to be on the, the faces, you know, the bottom face and the top face because the infill isn't really going to be visible. So when I start getting to the infill phase, I'll start using longer pieces just so I don't have to um, supervise the machine as much. But this seems to be working. So now that it started printing all the support structure for the internal, you can see that I switched to a much longer piece because it's just not going to be visible. But I'll let this piece run and then I'll throw some green in there and then we'll get it running. And then when we get back to the top layer, I'll start putting those short pieces in again. Okay, so how did I do? Well, not as good as I wanted. Um, what I realized is I need much shorter pieces, so like five to six centimeters at most. Um, I really like how it blends here, but 
these sharp lines aren't bad either. Um, the issue I did have, as you can see, I had layer failure, and that's because I wasn't paying attention. And if there's not a piece pushing the next piece, um, it doesn't uh, adhere well. So there was a couple of times where I let it get to the end, and for some reason the function for telling me that it's out of filament isn't working, so I have to be pushing a piece in. So I did read on the internet that you can either heat or glue with some super glue pieces together. Um, I gotta put some thought into that because putting super glue into my printer is not a decision I'm gonna make lightly. So I'm gonna cut some five and six millimeter pieces up. I need about five meters to finish this project and then see what the best way to adhere them together is so I have a constant feed rate. And then we'll run this again. It takes about 50 minutes, so it's not too bad. So after multiple tries, I finally achieved success, and I'm pretty happy with this. A little bit more green would have been nice, but that's okay. Um, my failure was not related to the machine in the least whatsoever. When I was cutting the little six centimeter segments, I was using these diagonal cutters. And what it was doing, and you probably can't see that, but it was causing the end to be wedge shaped. And as the two ends were coming together, and I'll use my hand to demonstrate, they were going past each other like that and jamming inside the feed tube. So what I did is just got a regular pair of scissors and just cut the end square, and that caused them to be able to butt up against each other and continue pushing them and not jamming. And that ultimately was my success, just choosing the right tool to cut the filament. Okay, next step. There's my star model. Got it up on the screen and I have scaled it so it fits inside this one. And I'm going to do this one as layered, white, then gold, then white again. So it takes about a meter. So I've got 30 centimeters there, and then 20 centimeters there, and then 20 centimeters there, roughly. Uh, it's a little 72, I think is what it said. 72 meters, so 72 centimeters. So I should have enough there, and we're going to print that now. So I've got my 3D prints done. I got the two stars. They came out a little different, that's cool. And my main body. And I have some um, copper wire here, some strand. It's really, really small. And what I need to do is drill a hole through the top and through the bottom so that I can place the star in between and it'll float in the middle. So I have the smallest bit I could find, which is a 16th inch. And I'm going to go ahead and drill that hole, and that should uh, give me plenty. That's over three millimeters thick. So I've twisted two strands together to give it a little bit of rigidity. And we're going to come up here from the bottom, see if we can get all the way through these layers. There it goes, and then feed it through this top hole and get it through there. There it is exactly. Oh, there it is. Oh, there we go. All the way through. Okay. So I'm going to glue these together, sandwiching that copper wire in between. I'm going to put a couple of dabs of Starbond on here. And then I'll zap the other side with some activator. And then hopefully these 
will go together nicely. It'll sit right in that center section. I'll squeeze those together now. Right there. Like that. Perfect. And just as a final, I'm just going to put a little uh, semi-gloss polyurethane on here to kind of give it a little bit of a shine. See if that works. So this is my first time working with a 3D printer and attempting this. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it. It was some challenges, but it came out good and it's going to a worthy cause. As I said in the intro, this Christmas ornament is for Makers for Toys for Tots run by Dean Duplantis from Dean Makes. So for every ornament he receives, he's gonna donate a toy for Toys for Tots. I'll have a link down in the description to his page on Instagram if you're interested in getting involved as well. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, put those down below in the comments. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, hit the bell for notifications. I've got some videos you hear you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right there. Thanks for watching. Dad it yourself.